Good morning, friends. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, this video is going to be awesome because you guys are doing the thinking for me. You gave me all the instructions for this tutorial. I asked on Twitter and Instagram a couple weeks ago, what are your most unusual, out of the ordinary makeup tips that you use? Is it like different order of products? Is it just some unconventional techniques? Tell me about it and I will work it into a makeup routine. And so on Instagram and Twitter, it took me a long time to sort through like all of your different tips and tricks, but I ended up with like two dozen narrowing it down to where I felt like they could all fit into a full face, but there were tons of great ideas or at least weird ideas. So thank you so much for contributing these. It will be really interesting to see which ones stick for me, like which ones I end up repeating and using more and more. First off, the first suggestion from Josie is I put my lash curler in my bra while doing my makeup up to heat it up makes the curl last longer. Well, okay, Josie, if you say so, here we go. It's going in. That's a little chilly at 5 a.m. on a Thursday. Then the next tip is I always put my mascara in my bra while I get ready. Warm equals less clumps. Maybe not so weird. Guess there's a reason God gave us two. Here we go. All right. So that stuff's going to hang out in there. Those are the only instructions I've been given to put things in my bra. My left eye is giving me fits this morning. It is not liking the contact today. Hopefully it gets over itself before the eye makeup steps. Next up, Sweet Sarah says, I powder my nose after primer and before foundation to help it stay and keep oiliness away. So we're gonna try that. Um, I've got my CoverGirl True Blend uh, Moisturizing Primer. This primer looks white when it squeezes out. I actually really enjoy this one. Um, I think it's a great combo of moisture plus smoothness. It really gives me a nice even canvas. And then, okay, we're gonna powder my nose. I guess I'm gonna grab out my Beauty Bakery Flower. That might be a good kind of powder to try for this. I don't know, I have never put on powder before foundation before, but I had seen the suggestion come up several times, which leads me to believe it probably works. Okay, so we're gonna just, um, I'm using my e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush here, and she just really mentioned the nose. I'm guessing anywhere that you're really oily, maybe this would be a good step. I'll kind of do sides of the nose since that's sometimes a little like sweat zone for me and also under the nose. Heck, maybe between the brows. Okay, I actually look mattified there, so I think I did what I was supposed to do. Guys, there were lots of tips involving foundation. Um, I chose to go with one that I thought might really like stick in my routine. All y'all who are telling me to use the Beauty Blender Dry, I, I don't know, I'm backing away slowly. I mean, no offense, but you're crazy. Glad it's working for somebody. I don't think I want to go there, but here's what Flo says. I blend my foundation with a stippling brush first, and then I go in with a wet beauty blender. This way I waste way less product and it always looks flawless. And honestly, it has been so long ago that I ever used a stippling brush, like a full-size stippling brush, not like my e.l.f. small stipple brush for blush or something, but a stippling brush for foundation. I had to dig this out of my closet. This one's from Urban Decay. It's just your classic kind of stipple brush where you know the bristles aren't like super densely packed up here they're really like feathered out and so I guess I'm gonna pump out some foundation dab it in with that first and then finish off like she said, with the Wet Beauty Blender. Stippling brushes were like a huge tip I remember learning about like earlier on in YouTube, and I used to use that technique all the time. Um, but I'm gonna go for my L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation here today. Um, I have it in the shade Rose Ivory, which is just a hair light, but it'll, it'll do. So I'm pumping some out. I'm gonna sort of smooth it out a bit, and then I'm gonna dip into that with my stipple brush. Hopefully I'm gonna do this right according to flow and man yeah this is a technique that used to be so hot on YouTube the idea of stippling on foundation as you can see this foundation is really good coverage actually it's pretty lightweight for as good a coverage as it is and I've liked it I've kind of been going back to it quite a bit lately okay got plenty of foundation there still on my hand I'm not sure if she meant like blend it out to this extent with the stipple brush, 
Maybe the Beauty Blender was supposed to tackle more of that job, but here we are now with the Dampen Beauty Blender, and I think this will just work everything in a little bit more. I really think it is, especially around there, little areas like around the eyebrows where um, this brush like didn't apply quite enough pressure, but it did well along the flatter planes of my face. But the Beauty Blender is really finishing the job. Oops around the nose a little bit more. Let me grab some of this extra. I keep pulling my hair in there. Guys, that turned out really nice. Um, I really thought it was fun to pull in that stipple brush again. I felt so nostalgic. Um, but using the Dampen Beauty Blender, I think really helped certain areas just like mesh back into my skin. So that's that's a cool tip. The next tip is going to cause me to pull in my eyeshadow primer a little bit early. Um, Deandra says, I apply my eyeshadow primer not only to my eyelids, but also my under eye area before, oops, dang it, I should have done it before foundation, concealer, etc., to prevent creasing makes a huge difference. Okay, well, we'll at least get it on there before concealer. Sorry, Deandra, so much to keep straight. So I'm gonna use Milani here, and you know, I'll probably squeeze out a little extra since I'm gonna put it in more places. And I will go ahead and get those eyes primed, and then I will put it under the eye too before the concealer. We'll see what happens. You know how much I adore this stuff as a straight up eye primer, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's awesome in another way. <laughs> so I really dabbed that in there. I really tried to hit that crease under the eye because I'm sure that's a, a danger zone that she's kind of referring to there. Next tip involves concealer, and Maria Luza says, I always wait a couple minutes before blending the concealer for a higher coverage. And this is something I think Heather Austin tends to do this as well. I've been meaning to kind of try this technique, but I'm always too like, you know, jumping on it, trying to blend it in. Too worried that I'm gonna get to the point of no return, you know? Um, but here's a concealer that I think I'd like to see the coverage maximized on. It's the Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Concealer. I used this in a past video and I thought maybe the coverage wasn't quite as up there with a couple other things that I like to use. So we'll see, it's 1C Light light cool is what I have. I'm going to apply this here in my under eye area and out here as well and then right in here and I'd like to get it on the top of the nose between the brows a little on the chin too. Literally a couple of minutes like this is going to give me anxiety waiting a couple of minutes it's okay I just set a two minute timer we're going to see if this actually works I hope this doesn't set too fast. chomping at the bit to go ahead and blend this. Let's see if it blends. Okay, it is blending. Okay. It's blending. Is it more coverage than it was before? I think it definitely is. Oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. Like, I'm surprised. I, I mean, not all concealers might have been able to handle this step, though. That's what's concerning to me. I think you gotta baby step this one, because I don't know if my e.l.f. would do this as well. The e.l.f. camo concealer, I feel like it would set faster. Just a hunch. I don't know. But you could maybe, like, try it for a minute and then, like, work your way up and see how much time you could get away with because it definitely does work. It amped up the coverage of this concealer considerably. Before I felt like it was barely covering my melasma and now I feel like it really has. And I even blended it in with a beauty blender which sometimes even takes away the coverage a little bit. So, wow. Okay. Next up, um, no tip here, but I'm just going to lightly set my face. I'm using my Laura Mercier Pressed. I've really been falling into this one a lot more. I'm going to gently go over the under eye and the T-zone. This is an Emily original right here. <laughs> wow, never thought of that before. And the next tip, and this was the whole inspiration for the video, was when I was given this tip in a past video to switch the order of my bronzer, blush, and highlight. I would normally go bronzer, blush, highlight. And the person in the comments said, instead do highlight, blush, bronze. And Sarah here says, listen to the answer from a previous video, highlight, blush, bronze is my new way to go. Just to simplify here, I'm going to take all those steps from one palette. 
I'm going to pull out my Catrice California in a box here, which is actually a great little multitasking palette. Highlighter first. There's a nice big highlighter here. Pull out my highlighter brush. And we'll just get some glow happening. Why not? My guess is that the end result of this technique is going to be a more natural looking highlight because instead of kind of sitting on top of the rest of your makeup steps, it's going to be somewhat overlapped by a couple others, you know? So I don't think I want to hold back too much on highlight because I think it's going to get like kind of bogged down by the other things. I'll bring some up here. And then blush remains the middle step, and I have an extra tip here for blush. Leishmo says, I put blush on the bridge of my nose, my forehead, and my chin, as well as my cheeks. The sun naturally hits those areas, so it makes sense to me to liven them back up after I've flattened them with foundation. A little bit of highlighter sometimes looks nice, too. Okay, so we've got the highlight, and it sounds like we're going to go hog wild with some blush. I'm going to go into this rosier shade right here, and... I'm going to start out applying it where I usually would. And this is kind of a matte color, by the way. So we'll see if we still see highlighter through it. Are you still noticing some glow? I am. Now, where else did she say to apply it? Bridge of the nose, forehead, and chin. Okay, so we'll get a little on the brush. Go over the bridge of the nose. I see what she means there. Sun hits there. A little bit on the forehead, just lightly. And a little on the chin, just very lightly. I can still see it though. I hope it's translating on camera because I could definitely tell I've put blush in those places. That makes a lot of sense actually. I think it really works with this very middle of the road tone of blush as well. And then working kind of backwards, bronzer is going to be our third step. And to add to that, Jackie on Twitter says, I make a double chin face and put dark contour on the part that puffs out, lighter contour where it folds. Makes a huge difference in pictures. And then somebody says, thanks for the giggle thinking about the application process. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try that as I bronze slash contour here. So make a double chin face. I got easy access to lots of chins. Contour the part that puffs out. Okay, so this part's puffing out. So I went into this bronzer shade right there. Uh, deepening that up. I feel like maybe I'm creating unnecessary creases in my skin. There we go. Oh, wait, where do I make it lighter? Where it folds. I can see a big difference. It's a great visual contrast there. Um, now I'm going to go on and I'll bring some bronzer on my face as well. I do have the darker and lighter contour here. So she said the lighter contour where it folds. So like right maybe along this kind of creasy area that I have here. And then we'll just give ourselves a little depth right over here. Guys, I'm feeling pretty good about the way things are looking, actually, in terms of that combination and uh, sequence of highlight, blush, and bronzer. I thought the highlight was going to get more buried, but it really isn't too bad. Um, I mean, I can definitely still see the glow on my skin, so that's cool. We've got a couple of tips here when it comes to setting the makeup. Kayla says, I blend a sheer setting powder using a big fluffy brush after my bronzer blush highlight to blend it together and make it more seamless and natural. So I got a huge brush here. This is from um, Lisa J's BK Beauty. This is the 102. It's a really large brush, so I'll do that. But then Krista R says, after I use setting powder, I spray with setting spray then powder again, then spray again. And my foundation doesn't budge after all that. So she said sheer setting powder. So I pulled out this Too Faced Peach Perfect. Um, you know, it's not a product that I feel combines a lot of coverage. I think especially applied with a fluffy brush, it'll amount to a very lightweight powder. So I'm gonna, whoa, I just stepped in way too much. I'm gonna get some here on my fluffy, fluffy brush. And I'm just gonna blend this around all over. We'll see if we look a little more, um, oh, and I'm tasting that peach powder thing. <laughs> we'll see if I look more seamless and blended. Do I? This brush feels really nice all over my face, I can tell you that much. I think this powder took me just a little more mattified, which kind of consequently makes me look a little more perfected, I would say. And then Krista R would say, put on some setting spray. This is my all-nighter. I'm still using the summer solstice. Let ourselves dry a bit. And then powder again, says Krista. Okay, Krista, if you say so. 
I feel like with all these little like long wearing hacks, this makeup looks could last me for like two days. I'm gonna need to do this before going into labor or something. Because remember, we pre-powdered the nose before I even put foundation on today. And then spray it again. I did about six mists each time, okay? All right. My coverage is also looking phenomenal, but this has been a lot more powder on my face than I would usually wear. The brow tip that I found involves setting the brows, so I'm gonna go ahead and do them, and then when we get to setting, we'll bring in the tip. I used this e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil today, and this is in the shade Neutral Brown, so all I've done is filled them in. And then the next step, Anastasia says, using lash primer to set my eyebrows. A gentle press takes the white look away. And then she's got a laugh cry emoji after that. So are you serious here or are you just trying to lead me, lead me astray with this crazy tip? I have this Milk Kush Lash Primer and it is white. And so we're going to set the brows with this. Okay, going in. Um, okay, seeing, seeing a lot of, a lot of white. Like, did you accidentally pick up the wrong tube and then it just ended up working out amazingly? Now we're going to blot. Blot. You know, maybe a little spoolie would help. Okay, yeah. Ooh, it does, it does kind of feel like there's definitely some added thickness in there, you know? That makes sense, though. That would be what this step would do is kind of thicken up your brows. Here's a question for Anastasia. Are your brows white? <laughs> okay, gonna just kind of brush it through slash dab. She said kind of dab. Okay. No visible residue left behind, but the brows kind of look thickened up in some areas where I know they look perhaps a, a slight bit more sparse. Cool, we'll see how it holds. Couple of tips where eyeshadow is concerned today. And remember, we've already put on our eye primer, but Amber says, I hold my eyeshadow brushes by the end instead of holding close to the bristles like many do. I think I hold probably closer to the bristles. I used to paint a lot before I got into makeup and that's how I'm used to holding a brush. Okay, we're gonna try that. And then also Shireen said over on Instagram, I feel like reversing the order of applying shadow softens the look for every day. I like to apply the darkest outer corner shadow first, then mid-tone crease color, etc. Okay, so darker to lighter. See if I can keep all this straight. Here's the palette I think I wanna pull out today. I'm gonna use my Viseart Dark Edit. So it looks like this. Um, while it says dark edit, we do have like shades that will, I think, function as our brighter, lighter shade today. And we're gonna start with the darkness first, like she said. So I'm gonna pull in my flat brush and we'll kind of start working in the outer part of the eye. I think I'll start with this really deep, dark plum, a super dark plum. And oh, I'm supposed to be holding out toward the end, out toward the end. I hold really, I think, pretty squarely in the middle of my brushes most times. I don't get too far in, but keep it toward the end. I wonder if this is the way Aunt Pup holds her makeup brushes as well, because she's, you know, a watercolor artist. This might just end up being my best makeup look of all time, and then I guess that's when I quit YouTube and just step away, back away slowly. Um, Y'all have the best tips, I don't have any. Okay, so this is our darkest shade, and I've just kind of dabbed it on the outer part of the lid, and then flip my brush to wedge it more into the crease. I'm gonna take my crease brush here, and without anything on it, I'm gonna blend over what I just did. That purple shears out in kind of a pretty way. And then we're gonna take more of a mid-tone shade, like she said, for the crease. Um, let's go to this really warm, rusty color right up here. I ain't scared, okay. Let that go to our crease. Um, I really like the effect of that. It consequently softened, the darker shade while applying the mid-tone shade, like it was a two-in-one kind of step. This is a really like rich, pumpkin-y, like deep pumpkin color. Anybody know if that Good Sport palette is back on ColourPop's website yet? It was a lot like this, like the two kind of have a lot of overlap similarities. We've got our deep plum, we've got our really like rusty, dusty, 
pumpkin. Um, I was not holding my brush how I was supposed to. Oh my gosh, it's going to take some getting used to. Blending brush now. Just bare. Really holding it right at the end. It's so weird. It's like I have to hold my fingers differently. You really don't think about it. When you're blending your eyeshadow, you don't really think about where you're holding on your brush, do you? Just blend out the edges a little bit here. But it's looking really nice. And then I guess that leaves working in a lighter shade, kind of maybe inward on the lid. These are kind of our pops right in here. I think I want to go with some of this purple and we'll let a lot of this cover a good chunk of the lid. So pretty. I think a good takeaway for this video might be if you're stuck in sort of a makeup rut or you're getting kind of bored, just like reverse the order of application. Go throwing on powder first. Go putting on highlighter before your bronzer, you know, see what happens. You just might like it. Now I see completely what she means because look at how nicely softened the darkest shade is. And if I went in with that at this point, like let's say I did my normal order, which would have been like crease and then maybe some lid and then pulled in the darkness, it would have been a little bit harsher, a little bit darker, standing out more. But now we have this. A couple more tips coming in here. Um, one says, I like to stamp or stipple dark eyeshadow at my lash line before applying eyeliner. This is a tip like, I, I see some people sometimes coming away with beautiful looks where their lash line looks so nicely diffused and not quite as stark as it looks with just liquid liner alone. So I'm really excited to try that. That's from Carly Smith. And then Dark Haired Claire says, I tend to not wear anything on the lower lash line, no mascara or shadow, it's brightening. I do that sometimes too so I'm gonna definitely do that today but we're gonna try the stamping across the upper lash line. I've got this angled Real Techniques brush called a definer brush. It looks like most of my angle brushes but maybe slightly thicker. So let's um, let's do the navy right over here. Get into that. Apply this all across the upper lash line. And when this blue overlaps the purple it really brings out a vibrancy in the navy that you weren't expecting to see. I'm trying to make sure I'm doing this thick enough so the effect actually happens, you know? Okay, so I kind of look like I've already given myself some nice definition there. Now I've got this liner pen. This is just the Too Faced Better Than Sex liner pen. And we're going to try to keep this really thin and close to the lash line thinner than what we did with the powder and see if we get a nice sort of gentler definition. That's nice. I like being able to see that fade of shadow. Y'all are geniuses. It just makes it look smokier. I covered up a little too much over here. I didn't get it thick enough to begin with so I'm adding just a little navy right here. Now guys, I think by far the most tips I received pertain to mascara applications so we're going to try to work in as many as possible. We already saw that we got the mascara as well as the lash curler warming up in the bra. Also here are a few other things I'm going to try to keep in mind. Miss Reyna says, I know I've said it before but mascara on the back of my lashes is a must. Cassidy says, not a technique but I trained myself to do mascara with closed mouth in high school. <laughs> That's an art. Mara says, I hold the mascara wand in my left hand to apply my left eye and my right hand for my right eye. I always keep it in the right hand. Trying to do this with my left hand will be a complete risk, but I'm going to go for it. So those are the things that pertain to application. And then we've got still a few more. Um, okay, so let's just, ow, something got pinched in there. It feels warm. All right. Oh, it feels really warm. Let's curl these puppies. And then the mascara has also been warming for fewer clumps, she said, and it definitely feels warm. If you keep these things in your bra the whole makeup routine, yes, they will feel warm at the end. Wow. Okay, let's do this. This is superhero. Oh my gosh, the curl, uh, the, the curl is better. Oh. And you guys, some people also gave the tip of busting out a blow dryer to warm up your lash curler, which I have heard that tip before, but it's so much quieter and easier, assuming, you know, stuff doesn't get pinched, like I said, uh, keeping it in the bra. Less clumpy? I mean, this mascara, sometimes by coat number two, it could start to get a little clumpy but it is going on very smoothly for me right now. So I think there's truth to that too. 
My tip when curling lashes is to do it for like 30 seconds and pulse the whole time. That was a, actually a David tip, was to actually pulse your lash curler. Oh, and I forgot Raina's tip. Real quick, I need to put some, let some of this come on the back of the lashes. Doesn't that drop the curl down a little? No, it kind of comes back up. It, it thickens them even more. Oh, now I have to switch. Oh dear Lord, the scariest part yet. Oh my gosh. Don't mess up. Like I'm not really getting in there like I would with confidence, but I am putting it on. Do you see it? I'm putting it on. If I could learn to do this though, it really does like more effectively hit the lashes and the inner part too. Try to wiggle it through. And don't get too fancy in. And then Raina wants me to come down this way with my left hand. Eh. And the other person said do it, she learned to do it with her mouth closed. Well, well that's you. <laughs> Bite my lips. I'm gonna have to go in with my right hand to finish this off and make them look somewhat even just because I need to be a bit more aggressive now. It's hard to keep your mouth shut. Like, just try keeping your mouth shut. You, it wants to open and nothing on the lower lash line, remember. That was another tip. And then another mascara tip here was, uh, Courtney says apply waterproof mascara over regular. Washes off so much easier, but it probably, you know, she's meaning it helps the staying power of everything. So let's go ahead and do that. What do I have here that's waterproof though? Oh, this kind is, this L'Oreal Unlimited. We'll put a coat of that on. Just like a little lock it in top coat idea here, I guess. And then I am getting a little clumpy over here, but guess what? There's a tip for that too. A dangerous tip. And this is one of those tips where you got to question like, are they trying to put me in harm's way here? Does this really work? I have seen and heard of people doing this. Chaz Breeze says, if my lashes get clumpy, I separate them with a big safety pin. <laughs> so I found a small one. I couldn't find a big one in my house. All right. Let me get my get all up in here with the mirror. Cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. Oh, but it is, I mean, is it working? Yes, it is. I mean, it is a little painstaking and a little dangerous. Oh, ew, I did poke myself just a little bit there. Okay, I need the mirror closer. Don't try this at home, kids. If you do, hold your mirror really, really close. My point is, I think it does work. Ooh, I'm getting off clumps, I'm separating. Check out the clumps I retrieved. Effective. Here's a tip for me. Um, now that these lashes have been messed with like no tomorrow, um, I can still tell that mascara and stuff is, is drying. Blink down onto your fingers like this and kind of hold the lashes up and they will dry in a little more upturned way. And so that's without having to pull in a separate curler and they kind of stand up better. Now Sayada Numahamed says, I put on my lipstick, then blot it with my fingers and use what's on my fingers as blush. Love it. Love that idea. I'm gonna try kind of a vampy fall berry here. This is Charlotte Tilbury's Glastonbury lipstick. It's one of the, I think it's one of the Matte Revolution lipsticks. And so we're gonna pop that on here. I do like these lipsticks because while they are matte, um, kind of the way I described the Melt lipsticks from an earlier video this week, they're matte, but they kind of stay with a nice creaminess. Nice and rich and intense, and now we're going to blot with our finger, like she said. Kind of soften that lip out a little bit. It could use it. And then dab it on his blush. Here we go. Is it working? Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh, who would have thought a lip this dark? as blush. Oh, but it's the perfect finishing step. You know how I always am kind of feeling like by the end of a makeup look, I want to add a little more blush. This is perfect for me. I love that. And you're like automatically freaking perfectly coordinated. Oh, I love that tip. Guys, that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for submitting these amazing tips. Seriously, some of these are really gonna stay with me and I think change my game. Let me know in the comments section what your favorite tips were or if you didn't get involved in this 
poll Q&A and you've got some different tips to share with us, let me know. But I'm definitely gonna keep doing the lash curler in the bra thing. We'll see how the staying power is. If this like lasts amazingly, I may definitely try powdering my nose again before foundation and doing the sort of alternating setting powder setting spray a couple times. Remember, we also put eye primer under the eyes. That was neat. Um, reversing the eyeshadow application was great, I thought. So many things. I think the practicing using the mascara with my left hand could be a game changer the better I get at it. And I love that last tip with blotting on lipstick as blush. Genius. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hey guys, I wanted to give you a little staying power check-in now after nine hours and I feel like overall things are looking really really impressive all over the face there's like no breakdown of product around my nose i can still see like my blush and all that stuff um, but i was upstairs and i was just kind of like planning to do a little touch up actually before going to the doctor and really the only two areas i needed to attend to i needed some lip color because that had faded but around the eye area it looked very very dry so what i did was i got some of that again the milk cooling water stick and i just patted it over everything and it kind of helped a little bit but I feel like when I was doing the like powder your face uh, spray your face powder your face spray your face thing maybe I should really have been mindful to not get that much extra powder up in that area like it may have been fine around the nose or the t-zone but maybe avoid the under eye a little bit more when i do that again i think we'll be perfect if we don't get too close there because really the whole rest of the face is looking great the eyeshadow is wearing really well viseart eyeshadows do tend to be very long wearing for me and then this is just my nude sticks gloss um, that i popped on for the afternoon so between nine and ten hours of wear very good staying power just wanted to show you that and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.